right, it's a big day. The legendary Goat Barn container is officially being delivered this morning. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't remember, this is uh, our oldest daughter, Adelaide. It's her project. She is going to take the shipping container and turn it into a goat barn, a milking room, kidding stalls, Feeding. a whole new fence, yeah. feed storage. Uh, it's a huge project that she's somehow convinced us to take on when we're building our house. But before that container comes, we need to share all the setbacks we encountered to get to this point. Today is an exciting day. We were marking where the shipping container goes. So we're working here with Adelai, uh, trying to make sure we've got it in the right spot. So we're gonna start the shipping container right here. Uh, there's also a huge mound back there that could be a problem. So we're gonna try not to get too close to that. What do you think? I feel like this is a good starting point. Yep. Yep. So this is gonna be the, we'll call it the north west corner. It's gonna go this way and down that way. So we got to set up a whole bunch of string lines. We're going to do concrete piers. Got to measure for all that. So let's get started. We have to make sure that these piers are in the exact right spot. So we're going to be creating a bunch of like crosshairs and we're going to screw these to these, wrap the string around connect it and then we're going to do one for each pier this way and so that'll give us like basically a cross on the ground where we have to auger so that we make sure that the corners are exactly in the center of that circle We're trying to measure corner to corner to make sure that we're square. And there's a plant right in the way. So we're gonna have to dig it up first. Hey, guess what? Uh, that didn't work. Nope. We got a call last minute that the truck driver could not, in fact, put our container on piers. No. So in all the research we did, we kept seeing these trucks that would come in with like an arm and they would set the container into place. Turns out that's not how it works here. Uh, they have to back straight in and drop the back and then pull out and it falls down onto whatever you've got supporting it. I'm glad we didn't pour any concrete piers because you can't back a truck up onto concrete piers. Uh, <laughs> it's a big problem. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, um, we made a call to Wilcox Rock and Sand and they were able to come out and put 20 tons of AB mix down and compact it and level it for us. And we are ready for delivery. Right. And, I mean, and remember, that was nine inches that we had to bring it up on the one side. And they had to build a ramp so that they could actually back up onto it. It was yeah. a whole thing. Anyway, yes. Thank you guys for coming out on such short notice. And now that we have this area prepped and ready to go, we're ready for the container delivery. Well, almost. <laughs> All right, it's a big day. The legendary Goat Barn container is officially being delivered this morning, but this also includes a whole situation with another acre of property that we just bought. Yeah, so that involves taking down some of our fence, putting up more fence, and uh, a lot of other things. And that has to be done today, because once we break that fence line, if we don't get it refenced by tonight, then we're wide open to predators, and we have dogs that could get out and run everywhere. And it's a whole situation, uh, and we have a bet going. Okay, what's the bet? The bet is, uh, I don't think it's gonna be done by the time you have to leave at 3.30. I think it will be. So if it is done, you get to take a day and go do whatever you want. Okay. All day long. Okay. And if I'm right, and I have to work on the fence after you leave, then I get to take a day and go do whatever I want. Okay. I don't know how the kids win in this situation, but <laughs> that's the bet right they now. They get a day too. Sure. Okay, guys, um, we are on a very tight time crunch, so it's time to cut this fence line and get started. All right, this is our high tensile, hot electric fence. Um, 
Like hot yoga? No. No, just electrified. Okay, this is our hot fence. <laughs> Why do I keep saying hot? Okay, this is our electric fence and we have to take down this line and this line and basically we're moving it over an acre. I'm a little bit sad to cut this. This was our very first project that we did here on the homestead. It's amazing, but you know, we're expanding, so that's a good thing. Um, so we gotta turn this off before we cut it. We're gonna cut it here and then we're gonna like get it out of the T post and, and kind of curl it up past yeah. that post down there. Cause at that post all the way down there, it's gonna go that way right. to the other. So if you can come post. on this side and hold this fence line while I cut it so it doesn't hit me in the face. Perfect. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Go. So the reason we're tying it up like this is because these get really hard to work with. Um, and so we want to tie it up and keep it in a circle so that when we have to refence, we can kind of almost like a tire, like unroll it while we're pulling it. Um, that'll keep everybody nice and safe. Usually you have a, a fresh roll on what's called a spinning jenny, and that makes it easier to pull out. But since we're trying to reuse as much of this original fencing as possible, uh, it's going to be a little tricky. last wire. Um, now that we have all the wires pulled out, we can just go and pull our timeless T-post right up out of the ground so that uh, the truck will have a clear path to get to the pad on this other acre. Can I hand it to you or why don't you throw them? No, they, we can't break them. line is cut and our blocks are in place. It's only a matter of time before that container makes its way to our property. So we should take a minute to mention USA containers. They're the ones we got this container from. It's only about $4,000 uh, shipped directly to our property, which we think is a really great price. Yeah, and while they aren't sponsoring this video, contact Elise at USA Containers and they might just give us a little tiny bonus. Yeah, there's an affiliate link in the description below. Okay, you ready to go to the next one?
the front of this built up pad has kind of sunk down as the truck and the thing had to come back up on here. So we're checking the level on the back for these blocks to make sure we build up the front blocks to the right level because otherwise once he sets it, it's like there. There's not much we can do. I need it. you to raise that up. Watch out! I'm going to Oh, hear that echo? Oh, that's crazy. Guys, we did it. I can't believe it. We almost had some problems, as always. Uh, it wasn't quite level. It's still not quite level, but we can adjust it later. I mean, it's like it's this. It's very one. close. We're going to fix it. So, we'll do that later. Like we said, we're on a time crunch. We have to get the fence closed back in. Yep. So, as so, much as we want to go play in the container. Um, Adelaide's going to take over from here and do the fencing all by herself. And then we'll go eat sushi. Cool. Okay. <laughs> okay, we had to take a quick lunch after that uh, stressful container delivery. <laughs> we're all good. Everybody's cooled down a little bit. I don't mean, I mean, we were just hot, like sweaty, not like mad at each other. Everything's fine. So remember, we have a bet going on. We're not going to finish the fencing by the end of the day, or we will. And so I want it to be known that, that I'm out here gathering fencing materials. I'm not slacking off to try to, to try to, you know, make it take longer. I'm out here doing my part. So. Let's go to the garage, let's get all of the fencing materials we can find. So first step, we need to put in our T-post all the way down to the new post that we put in. Uh, we have T-posts that we haven't used yet, but we do have the ones we pulled up when we took away this fence line. So we're gonna use those first and measure out. I'm gonna drill, hammer them in, so that when we start running lines, we just run them straight through. So we used up our existing T-posts. So we have to go to our supply pile and get um, some T-posts we never used before that. But that does mean we're gonna have to uh, measure and drill additional holes to fit our nine string configuration. So I'm gonna grab a drill cart, go pick them up, go make the holes and then keep going. Gotta prep the posts. So we're looking at uh, existing posts, making sure that we know which holes we need to pull the string through because there's a lot of holes. And then we're gonna have to drill three holes at the bottom of every T post. Cow patty. What's 35 minus 15? Fast math. 20? 20 minus 15 is 5. Yeah, we're right. You did it. 8, 6, 5. Yeah, that worked out pretty good. I'm okay with that. So what we want to do, we need a level. So the idea is we put a level on it, right? And then that way when we, we're looking for the hole, it's like where it's supposed to be. It's great. All right, Ada, drill it. At least the ground is soft and it rained a few days ago.
hands are starting to give out. All right, now this is the last T-post to put in there. But we have a tree here and I've already cut off some big limbs. So the question is, um, if I put it here, that's like the closest, but if I put it here, it will push it away from the tree a little bit more, which I think we might want. Mm. So I feel like we need to have it away from the tree as much as possible. I don't know what I'm doing. So we put in the vertical post and the angle braces uh, a while ago, waiting for this. And now before we pull these lines and put tension on them so that they're pulling against each other, we want to add an additional brace to this angle. So the idea is that you want to create a triangle. So we already have the first part of the triangle, so we're going to make the second, the second part, the last part of the triangle. A triangle has three parts. We we'll have the first two parts we of the triangle. We have the first two, babe. We're, we're, we're putting the third angle on. Okay, here's what you do. You take a piece of wire about... That long. This long. <laughs> roughly this long. Find the middle of it, all right? So the middle of it's right about there. So that's about a six foot? Yeah. So 12 foot total. And then we're going to go around this vertical post. So you want to get as low as you can on the post. And then secure it in place with a u-nail then we're going to bring it up and around and we're going to u-nail it again right here right where the two wires cross all right you got that one nope let me get, get over on this ah! gotta watch out for this high tinsel stuff it's got a lot of tinsel <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna wrap this uh, extra around this this wire here Yep, just twist it real tight. And we'll cut the excess off so we don't have to mess with it too much. Okay, now we're gonna take anything like a piece of rebar and we're going to start twisting this. We're just gonna twist, twist, twist and create the tension that we want to make the rest of that triangle. There you go. Also, this wire comes uh, kind of doubled up. So once you cut it, you have to untwist it. And then that way you actually get two pieces out of a single cut. It would be a little bit better if we had a little ATV that could fit six people in a truck. Like a, like a, bed of a truck. Uh -huh. That would be nice. Alright, we're trying something different with this fence. Instead of doing insulators on either side because this is going to be electrified, we got the insulator tube. So we can just pull this wire. This is an existing wire that we took down. So we're going to use it as much as we can. We'll just gripple the next wire to it. Time to go get the spinning Jenny. That's not the spinning Jenny, that's just a wire. So, Ugh. where is the ATV? That would be so handy. So tired of walking back and forth. Okay, I need a hammer. No, a hammer's not going to work. I'll be back. Bye. All right, next step is to get this wire from the spinning jenny. We're going to thread it through this T-post and all down those T-posts. We need to take those insulators to the corner, and we're going to meet up at our first line. Got it.
Ouch. It's like there's spiky plants in the desert. Huh. And I'm wearing shorts. That's weird. I kind of feel like it's my fault. Might be. I have good news and I have bad news. Good news is I won the bet. Bad news is I won the bet. And Ashley and Adelaide are gone with the goat to the vet. And it's only three of us left to finish this fence. The dogs really want to come outside and Cloud's been locked up all day. And the sun is going down and we don't have a lot of time. And it's 4.15 and it gets dark. Okay, uh, we got five out of nine lines run. We're trying to space them evenly so that we can leave a few off for the night because we're just, we're not going to get to it. Um, so I think we're going to do one more down lower. Hopefully that'll keep everybody good for tonight and we'll finish the rest. Oh, let's do it. We're back out this morning running those last three lines on the tinsel fence. Remember, nine strands, <laughs> they'll all be electrified. We've run most of the lines already, so we're gonna show you a couple of cool uh, ways that we're changing our install this time. There's a few products we ran across that are making this a lot simpler for us, so we'll show you those here in a minute. Also, yes, there's a lot of noise in the background today. We mentioned on a live a few weeks ago that they're running fiber internet to our property. Um, and so they've already run it on the roads. And so today they're actually running the conduit from the junction point to a spot on our property. So lots of big machinery, lots of things going on. Let's get this done. Now that wire is run, we need to go ahead and put tension on all these wires. So we'll show you what that looks like. We have a gripple here, slides into that. Your extra wire goes here and it's just gonna Pull that as tight as you need it. We're not gonna go all the way tight yet. We wanna get a look at everything and also we need people at all the places with the black insulator tubing to hold them in place as I tension it. So, close. One thing we're really excited about that we found other than the corner insulators is so this is how we used to have to connect a gripple. You know, you pull the wire through and then you have these extra bits and then we would have to literally find a way somehow to hold this here and twist it around. And it was such a huge pain, especially as you got down to these, there was nothing you could get a tool around. Come here, let me show you. So now we found these crimping sleeves. These fit on this gauge wire perfectly. You use a tool and you just basically crimp it down and that keeps it nice and clean. Uh, and it's way, way simpler. Okay, how long would this have taken us to wrap it the old way? So long. For, this, for these nine strands right here. So long. We're gonna time it. Ready, set, go. Nine minutes. Probably would have taken us what probably ten minutes per Insulated. line if we were doing it the other way. Yeah. Um also can I show you this really cool trick we did? This is our first um way that we attached you know, like when you have a hot fence, it can't touch the wood post. So you have to have something keeping it off. And this was our solution the first round, but this is what I found looks and works better. We actually bought some of this insulating tubing to go around corner posts instead of breaking the line and putting insulators in. This works really well. We just U-nailed it to the post so that the wire is off of the wood post and it looks a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier. <laughs> Thank you. 
So an interesting part about this fence change is that we're actually, we have to leave this line right here. And this line runs where the old fence line used to be all the way back to the road and, but the animal paddock is connected to it. So if we, if we start cutting this here, that means we lose the back of our animal paddock, which we're not ready to do yet. Eventually, once we build the new goat paddocks over here at the shipping container, we'll be able to take all that down. Uh, and that'll be a big project and it'll be nice to kind of open all that area up. But that does mean our fence charger. So we have this little fence charger here, hooks up to a 12 volt battery and it connects to, we do opposite, positive, negative, positive, negative all the way down. We jumper them together. That means this whole situation has got to move because it's going to an empty fence line. <laughs> now everything else is connected and this is not. Um, so the last thing we have to do is we got to move this box down to that corner where Ashley is, if you can see her. I am making our fence hot. So we have to, we have a ground wire and a live wire. So it's every other one is hot. So I'm connecting them to where when we move our power source over here and hook that up, everything is just going to work. Mm. At least that's the plan. You got all the positive jumpered and all the negatives jumpered. Isn't it ground and positive? Or is it negative? It's negative. Okay. So we have all the negative and all the positive. This is a, it's a DC system, so it's not grounded. AC, DC. Oh, hey. Yeah, I know. It's the joke everybody makes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm hooking things up. Yeah, you are. Want to hook up? Uh -huh. Want to hook up with me? <laughs> This is the exciting time where we're going to turn on the fence and see what it reads. Do it, should we show them the connection real quick? Oh what yeah. We did? So before, when we had it set up on the other side, we actually had these wires that go from our solar panel and stuff to all the way up here, which I thought that's kind of crazy. Why did we, I don't know why we left that much wire there, but we just made the connection down here, so it's a lot closer and a lot cleaner. So it just goes to one positive and one negative. Yeah, but a lot of wrapping around. And then and over then, oh, here, sorry. you made your jumpers. Yeah, all the jumpers are over there, out of the way. So this area just looks a lot cleaner. I like it. Anyway. Let's just turn it on and figure it out. All right, you're going to hear clicking here in a minute. So can you hear it? It's clicking, it's working. That's what Moses always said. Okay, so, you know. Hot. So let's look at it. You see it? That's 5,000 volts. It, that is hotter than it's ever been. Usually it's around 4.7 or 4.6. We did not add any fencing. We just moved the fencing. So the final thing that we really changed, and we've talked about this a little bit, but I'm just going to explain this real fast. On all our old fences, because this high tensile line was running here and we didn't want it to touch the wood, we had these insulators, and we'll show a picture of them here, but they were these weird little like chunks of plastic, right? And they had different holes in them. And so you would bring your line in, you would wrap it tight, and then you would make take a little piece, you would wrap it on the other side of it, and then you would go around your post, and then you would do it again. You put it, wrap it into the plastic, and then another one. And then you'd have to take your piece of electrical wire and go from here all the way to here so that your electrical would go through without actually touching the wood post. But look how simple this is. It's just a tube and it just sets right on the wood. Remember that the fence is hot. Okay, just so you know. The okay. fence is hot, but I'm not touching the negative, so okay. I'm okay. Uh, yeah, that's all it is. Like, look how simple that is. Yeah, and one thing I like about this is not just a piece of rubber. It actually has a piece of aluminum inside. Careful, don't touch your method. <laughs> so it holds its shape. It's not going to smash and like fall apart there. Right, and, and the metal doesn't touch this metal. There's right. like a piece of plastic in between it. So it's like a little sleeve of metal, but it's fully encased in plastic. Um, we went ahead and sprung for the one with the metal backing because we figured that would be, and they're UV treated, so they should last a long time. Um, the only thing we're not sure, we might need to put like a UNEL here just to keep it from, I mean, it'd be pretty hard to slide it up and down with all this tension, but I, you know, if a cow were to jump through or something, he could mess it up, so. But overall, like, 
the fact that we were able to hook up everything this quickly, have that few electrical connections to make, and that few um, wraps. Like, we didn't have to wrap anything. And the wrapping was the worst part of the old fence project. I really like this a lot. It looks really nice. I really nice. like it. Uh, the only thing is, the one thing I would do different is make sure I cut these all the exact same length so that it looks like a cleaner install. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. next time. All right, well, I'm going to get the lid for this. And can we be done? And Clean then we're up? done. <laughs> okay. With our fence line secured and the electricity back on, our homestead perimeter is finally safe again. Yep. We just want to take a minute and say thank you to every single one of you who have supported Adelaide's project. It means so much to our family. We're just blown away by your generosity. And so we want to let you know that we are going to wind down the donation part of this while we continue to build out. You have until Sunday, February 18th, and then we're going to close all that down and start producing all the goodies and get ready to move on to the next step. The next step is my dad is on his way all the way from Indiana. He's going to come and help us weld and do all the metal work on the container. Special guest. And that means, I mean, when your dad is here, we get stuff done. Oh yeah. So there's no messing around. Yeah. So. We'll see you next time.